Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Here we are with Mark Spencer. We're going to look at something in motion again, um, motion particularly again. another effect that people can create. Yeah, I've had some questions about how to um, kind of make text blow away. So like text being blown out of an air cannon or uh, just, just of kind of break float apart? Away? Yeah, yeah, break kind of apart break floaty. apart. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. So let's, I'm just going to create an effect and start from scratch. So we're in a totally empty motion project. Uh -huh. I'm going to use a text tool and I'll just type um, blow, blow away, away. Huh. and right. you can use any font you want. This just happens to be a, a, a font that I've got here. I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, I'm going to align it to the center. I'm going to make it a different color just so it kind of pops out here. F1 and reset the property so it goes right in the center, okay? okay. So that's my text that I want to have kind of get blown away. away. And the, the, the method I'm going to use is I'm going to attach a bunch of little, um, uh, basically like particles onto the text to form the letters. So okay. this is temporary, what we see now. Oh, I see. So I'm going to create the letters out, out of, of little pieces. Little dabs. Well, it's kind of like particles. I'm actually going to use a replicator to do it but I need little source objects. So in the library, there's you can just draw a little circle, you can use your own graphics, you can use anything, but in the content in the library under particle images, I'm actually gonna search for it because I know there's something called Neutron that I wanna use. And you, there is Neutron, this little guy. Neutron it was kinda cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that in the project and then I'm gonna hit the L key to replicate it because after all, actually I have to need to select it in the canvas first, L is replicate. <laughs> yeah. L is a key I always think yeah. of when I replicate. So there, I've got, I've replicated. Well, it makes a little grid right. of them. So here's here's the trick, is um, under the shape, uh, in this case, what we're gonna do is go to image. In other words, I'm gonna replicate them, not in a line or a circle or burst, I wanna replicate them in an image. And then I get a well. Well, I want to do the image source is to be the text. So I'm gonna drag the text into that well. And the other thing is I don't want a tile fill, I want a random fill, okay? okay? So by default, we get five points. It doesn't look like much, does it? So I'm gonna crank that up, and I can only go to 20. So yeah, gonna, the there we go, how does it look? Uh, yeah, let me let me realign this a little <laughs> bit so it's kind of aligned. Yeah, exactly, go to the inspector, you got it, you got it. Go to the inspector for the replicator, and let's make these a little smaller first, because they're kind of large, I don't yeah, really want them. Kind of large, let's make them more like that. And then I'm gonna crank this way up the number of points. Oh, and it's starting to take the form of the... Yeah, of the letters, the isn't letters. it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm gonna go way up high. And the other thing is this emission alpha cutoff. Just a hint on this thing. If you set it at zero, you just get a block of them. But I'm gonna set this at 1%. I find gives you the best results. The other thing I'm gonna do, it's hard to see. We've got all those little X's. There's a little X for every copy. Right. I'm gonna hit command and the forward slash key, which will hide off the hide the overlays. And I'm also going to hide the text behind, and let's make these a little smaller. There ain't another 40. Let's make them maybe 20% scale. You need more of them. Need more. So I'll crank that up higher. But now you can start to see the text, right? You can start to see that it says blow away. Yeah. Okay. And depending on the kind of font you choose, you know, I used something that was pretty solid to do this. Um, you can also generate a random seed, which will change how they're lined up. And right now, it looks kind of bent in the middle. That's because of this origin. Because uh, each of these is shaded, so they're being uh, org they're each each little particle has a shading on it. So if I set this to maybe uh, upper left, I get a, a different look to it. Or I could choose um, just left or just right, and I'll get a different shading. Try to find something that looks kind of nice. Center wasn't too bad. Um, upper right. Let's just say that something right. like that. Okay. So now I basically built my text out of these little. Blocks. Oh, now, yeah, yeah, and they could be. You could use anything. You could use little triangles. You could use any any kind of object. But you're using a bunch of little particles, and they're randomly assigned. So they're always going to form it in this kind of using haphazard the, way. Yeah, well, they're using the text in the drop well. To... Yeah, yeah, but they're not. It's not going to look perfect. Right. Is, one, is my point is, but it's going to give the basic idea of the text. So now, how do I get rid of that stuff? Okay. So what I'm going to do to do that is. I'm going to um, add a new object. This is going to be a little dummy object. I'm going to hit C and drag out for a little circle. And all this is is my little object that's going to repel that stuff, okay? And for this to work, I don't want the text underneath to be affected, so I'm going to put the text in a new group, the original source text, okay? So I, I create a new group. I moved it to the bottom. 
and I'll put that source text in there because I don't want it to be blown away also. I just want these little uh, neutrons to be blown away. So I'm going to select that circle and I'm going to use a behavior to do this. So the repel behavior? Exactly. <laughs> 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 Library, behaviors, and then I've got a search term here. That's why I don't see anything. I'll take that out and I'm going to go to my uh, simulation behaviors and I've got something called repel. So I'm going to drag that sucker onto the circle and I'm going to crank this bank up. And if I play this now. Ooh, look at that. It's, they're being repelled. Yeah, they're being repelled. It's not quite the look I want, but um, that little circle is, is making those uh, go away. Okay. Now, the thing is, I want to do something very different. I want this to only affect things that are really close to it because I want to animate it through the text. Sure. So let's go to the inspector. And I'm actually going to take its influence, which is 1,000. That means anything that's within 1,000 pixels will be affected. And this is a 1280 by 720, so everything very close is being affected. But if I drop, for instance, let's drop that down to 500 to see what happens. And if I now play it. It only affects the first line. First, first line. Right. That's, that's kind of cool. Right. right. Especially, let's increase the strength. Um, you can only, the slider only goes up to 100, but you can drag right on the value field and go much higher. So I'll go a lot higher. So it really just kind of has a bigger impact. You can really crank this thing up. You can also add drag, and what drag will do is it'll, they'll get affected by the same amount, but then they'll suddenly start slow to slow down like they're, they're in a, an environment, they're in the thick soup or something. In this case, I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep that down. So I'm actually going to set this influence down to something like 50, really small. Now it's not affecting anything at all, uh, but if I move the circle closer, you can see it's just affecting things that are really close to it. Right. Okay. And the size of the circle, by the way, doesn't matter. This could be a circle. It could be anything. But see, as I move through, you can kind of see how it's moving stuff away. Yeah. So I'm going to animate it to fly through here. So all I'm going to do is move forward in time a little bit, turn on recording, and drag it through. Like that. <laughs> okay. Turn off recording. And if I play that back now, we can see how it's kind of uh, affected it. Yep. In fact, I don't need to see the circle because I don't want to see it. I just want to see the text kind of get blown away. And let's fool with it a little bit more. I can take that uh, size, that influence size, maybe 30. I just want to affect, you know, I could just have it blow some of the middle of the letters away and reveal something underneath. So, for example, if I turn the text back on underneath, that could then reveal the text, text. underneath. We can see it's a little bit off. So you have to reposition this replicator a little bit to... Get it over Let's top. see, you could use this effect if you want the effect of accumulating snow on letters or... Yeah, exactly. Um, the other way. That, that would do it well. And then let's also... Oh. Oh. All, remove your, you know, turn your cell phones off. You do that <laughs> in the theater? That. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, continue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to so actually, I'm going to include that. I'm going to put that strength way up. It's a 200. I'm going to put like at 1,000. Uh -huh. Okay. So wow. it, just, it just like kind of pops those off. Another kind of, so now it's almost like they're all being shot off. Yeah. And in fact, what would be kind of cool is as it moves across, if it kind of randomly moved across, so it was taking different pieces away. That's the thing away. about all of this um, computer-generated animation. After a while, it starts looking very computer-generated. You want to do as yeah. much as you can to make it look Ran kind less of random. Yeah, more random. So yeah. if I wanted to make this kind of look at shooting pieces of it off, as it's moving across, what I'm going to do is with this circle selected, if I go to its properties, its exposition I'm going to control click on that and use a parameter behavior. And we've been talking a lot of parameter behaviors yep. throughout this, this series of motion tutorials we've been doing over the past few weeks. So I'm just going to put a little um, randomize on that. And if I turn my overlays back on and we crank up that randomize, we should see, should be seeing much more random. Let's do add and subtract. I want to see a lot of randomizing in the path. Oh, you know why? I added it to um, X. I wanted to add it to Y. Properties, transform, position, Y. That's how you can reapply it to a different one. There. See that line now? Yeah. Now that's now too. It's really that's random. Yeah, it's too high. I just wanted to kind of get a few pieces of it there, here and here and there. Yeah. Um, so now as it goes through, it literally looks like you're taking little shots of it along the way. Right, but it's random or it's being yeah. applied across the. The face. And I'm going to crank that repel strength even up higher, like maybe 3,000. That 30,000 is really high, so let's do 5,000. 5, 1, 2, 3. Okay. 
and I'll turn off the overlays again. And there you get a completely different kind of look, like it's just little pieces of it are being blasted away. So just a few different ideas of how to kind of, you know, blow away something that, that looks like text in the shape of text. Um, the final thing I'll mention is that you can do this stuff in 3D space. So what you can do, it'll really start to affect performance because we've got, you know. A lot of different iterations. Well, of thousands, we've got thousands of copies of the sphere. But the basic idea would be to add a camera and take the replicator itself and put it in 3D by checking the 3D, 3D checkbox. Check and there's one more thing. The repel behavior, if we look in the heads-up display, has um, include X, Y, and I want to include Z, too. Uh, and then really for things to move in Z space, I'd want this thing that's repelling is on the same plane right now, right? right? So I'd want to move it in Z space a little bit. So I can go to its properties in Z space and, um, and move it. I don't actually want to set a keyframe, uh, but it will set a keyframe because that's kind of what it does. But I'll just move it to like uh, 15 to move it up a little bit. So now if I move, if I orbit that camera around, those, you can kind of see, let me move back, those are actually being blasted back, back behind, the letters. Ba behind the letters in 3D space, yeah. So let me orbit it there. And now we won't get the same kind of real-time playback that we were getting before. No, things really slowed down. Yeah, but it's now it's blasting those things away in 3D space, which is really kind of cool. And then we can dolly in really close to this. You have kind some of see what of it looks uh, like. rasterization on or? This. Nope, nope, it's just, um, it is, they always, those are moving backwards in 3D space now. Um, in fact, what we could do is set this, part of the thing is this is, uh, let's go minus 10 to move in the other direction and let's start moving the other direction. And now these are being blasted away in different directions in 3D space. That's very cool. Okay, so it kind of gives you an idea. You can go further and put a floor in, turn on a light and shadows. Oh my gosh, and you're but really it's, affecting its, its performance. A, it's a, yeah, it's yeah big, lights, shadows, big on in there, and it's like <laughs> yeah. point negative so, frames per second. Exactly, per but big... you know, uh, you can definitely do it, and it just depends how far you want to take it. But this gives you some idea of how you can, uh, you know, create letters in 3D space and blow them away. Blow them away. Yeah. So actually, we were all pretty blown away by how cool yeah. this is. And it, you know, they could follow you along. Because you, 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 all of the stuff to use is built right into the Motion library. Yeah, I didn't use anything outside of it whatsoever. Right. So if, if you want to learn more about Motion, uh, we have a complete set of tutorials on working with particles, working with uh, replicators, and paint strokes, and masks. You can buy it all together for one bundle. And Mark does an excellent job explaining all this stuff. So thanks for watching another uh, episode of MacBreak Studio.